Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode six. Today, we are talking about gratitude and grace, otherwise known as rest part two. (laughs) I really felt that it was important that we dig into this a little bit more because it's such an important topic. So today we're going to talk about some of the obstacles to rest and overcoming those obstacles, as well as a couple tools to help shift the way you're showing up to a practice so that you set yourself up for more success in that practice of giving yourself time to rest. (laughs) So without further ado, let's get started. Hey there, I'm Valerie Friedlander, Certified Life Business Alignment Coach, and this is Unlimited. This podcast bridges the individual and the societal, scientific and spiritual, positive and negative, nerdy and no, there's just a lot of nerdy. (laughs) Come on board and let's unlock a life that's as badass as you are. I just got off a call with the amazing women in my group coaching, and I realized that we had a little bit more to talk about when it comes to rest, but we're not going to necessarily specifically talk about rest this time. I want to take a look at some of the components that relate to rest that pull us away from rest and that support rest and the benefits of resting. <laughs> so it it is sort of the same topic, but ultimately ties to the benefits and productivity and energizing nature of this particular time, even when it doesn't feel like the standard way of getting stuff done. As I was saying in the group, our thinking around productivity is very hyper-masculine and doesn't allow for the fluctuations. And it, honestly, I mean, I say hyper-masculine, I don't necessarily mean that that's even good for guys either. I know that it certainly isn't healthy when we, when anybody pushes themselves to a breaking point. Hence, rest being a thing that has been written about. And I actually will have a link in the show notes to the book called Rest because there's some really profound things in there, one of which is a reminder to treat rest as work's equal partner, which we don't do. We we treat it as like this thing we have to tolerate in our lives. No, it's important. Okay. I've already talked about that, though. So let's talk about the other components that are also important. One of the things that came up on the call was the idea of taking time for ourselves to just chill and relax and watch YouTube or watch Netflix and how that can create guilt. Uh, One of my clients said, every time I sit down to watch something, I feel guilty. And that is a red flag because there's a reason we need to sit down and rest. And okay, maybe watching Netflix isn't the most rejuvenating thing ever, but that's kind of judgy, right? Like anything that allows us to turn our brains off and not be figuring things out and really intensely, actively using our brain is helpful. It it does allow rest to occur, gives our brain space to process. So there is value in that. And there's a reason why we want to sit down and just kind of veg out for a little bit. The reason we experience guilt is while we are honoring the value of taking time to rest or even the need to give ourselves that space, if Our brain hasn't categorized that into being productive, which in our society often means somehow connected to making money or supporting children, especially for us moms. And that was actually one of the things that came up was it didn't used to be a problem until she became a mom, at which point, what are you doing? You're not supposed to 
sit around and not do something. Like everything you're supposed to be doing is supposed to be around helping the kids and doing things for them or, you know, whatever we think of societally as productive. And that's all the subconscious mumbo jumbo. It's not fair to us, to moms, to women, to men, to anybody in between that we do that to ourselves. And the problem with allowing that guilt, which I didn't specifically say, it's a conflict of two values. So when you experience guilt, it's this sense that that you feel good when you're honoring a value and you feel bad when you're threatening a value. And then you feel doubly bad because part of you feels good and you shouldn't feel good because you feel bad. So (laughs) when we experience guilt, what's happening is that we are taking energy away from the rest. We are pulling our energy. We're draining our energy. It's like having a leak in your tire. Your car is not going to go nearly as well or nearly as fast. It's going to drain the gas faster. You're going to have to stop sooner. How far can I take this analogy? (laughs) When you have a leak in the tire, eventually the tire is going to go flat or you're going to have to constantly stop and refill the tire. So you're going to keep getting pulled to rest more because the quality of your rest, the quality of the time for you is lessened because you're not fully embracing that time. So that's one of the big things that I want to emphasize here is give yourself time. As I mentioned in the last episode, there is a lot of value in rest, and it's important that we allow ourselves that time. Now, what I thought was also interesting was she mentioned that she would feel guilty, but then beat herself up for feeling guilty. And that's (laughs) such a, that's such a, thing that we do. I mean, how many of you, especially moms, will do that? Beat yourself up for beating yourself up. If if you've done any kind of self-work, it's like you know better, but you're still doing the thing. That's one of the things that I do a lot of work with clients around. A lot of my clients tend to come to me when they're going, I know better, but I can't seem to do different. It's like my head and my heart are disconnected. And it's hard to take book knowledge, knowledge that like, well, I've I've been told this, I've heard this, I've read this, I know it's true, into a way of being. Because while you may have shifted your awareness around something, it hasn't moved from the space of awareness into action. And that's a process. It's not something that just happens overnight. You can't just know it and then suddenly it's different. It's about learning and training yourself differently and setting up support systems and setting up new habits. So it's the thought and the action need to go hand in hand, but oftentimes the thought hasn't been connected with an action or the action is too far from what you currently have to be able to do it or do it in a way that works well for you. Or you do it, but because it doesn't look the way you think it should, note the should there, you start beating yourself up over how it's going. And that beating yourself up drains your energy and you don't get as much out of doing it differently. And so you tend to default back into what's more comfortable. Oh my goodness. So does that sound familiar? I know it's I know it's something that I have done. So if it does sound familiar, you are not alone. And that is why the very first step in any of this, when you're trying to change a pattern, when you are engaging something different, it's so important to give yourself grace. And when I say grace, it's basically forgiveness. I touched on this in the last episode, but... It's recognizing that you're human, and that's okay. It's okay to be human. There's nothing wrong with you for having self-doubt. That's just a red flag to say, hey, there's something to look at here. It's like a I w- – actually, it's not a red flag. It's like a yellow flag. It's like a caution sign that says not to stop, but to notice 
like I talked about the last time. It's about noticing. It's about giving yourself space to pay attention. So when you're giving yourself space to rest and you start feeling guilty and then you feel bad that you feel bad, just take a moment and go, you know what? It's okay. It's all right and it's normal that I'm having these feelings. And especially if you can identify why you're having those feelings, it can help immensely because it takes it out of that subconscious space that autopilot space. Our brains just love to put things into buckets of what is familiar, and it's happening constantly beneath the surface. It's the way our brain works. Engaging those consciously and recognizing that it's normal that it's happening. It's normal that we beat ourselves up because we have always done that in this context. Now we can take it out and look at it and go, okay, there is something here. What is here? What do I need to look at about this? And depending on what area that is, there are people who can support you around doing some of that deeper work, or some of it is stuff that you can do on your own. I'm going to give you a couple tools that you can do when it comes to giving yourself grace around rest and allowing rest to be equal to work in your life so that you can be more productive and creative because when our brain's in survival mode, it is not as creative and we limit options and we can't see possibilities. Again, the brain buckets, when you place things subconsciously into these categories without looking at it, we limit our options. We limit what we can access. For example, if you make an assumption about somebody because they remind you of somebody else, you may block the opportunity to get to know somebody who is amazing. You know, like this person kind of looks like my ex, so no thank you. You're not going to engage that. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, recognize that you're human. Anytime that you start to beat yourself up for any of it, self-doubt, guilt, not taking time to rest, feeling depleted, burning out, like any of those things that you don't like, and then you're like, what's wrong with me that I'm doing this? Stop and recognize that you're human and this is normal. And this is information. That is the most important thing. All of it's information about the way you're experiencing something. So it's that caution sign. What's going on for me that this is happening? The next thing you can do, especially when you find yourself struggling to rest or take that space, is work on some gratitude. I will probably talk about gratitude a lot more in another episode because there is so much to say about it. There are ways that we use gratitude to keep keep ourselves stuck and keep us in good enough. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how it can be helpful, especially if you're feeling a pull into busyness, into beating yourself up over anything, taking some time to seek what you can be grateful for. Again, what it does is it opens up your brain to see more options instead of shrinking the possibilities. Because when we're beating ourselves up, when we're looking for what's wrong and who's to blame, we are shrinking our options. And it makes it so much harder to see the fullness of life and the possibilities in front of us. So taking that time to look for gratitude. And I say look for gratitude because it isn't about feeling grateful. There are certainly times where you will feel grateful and that just a natural response, just joy and gratitude and that heart expansive experience and all of that. That happens and it's wonderful. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. Because oftentimes when you most need to look for gratitude is when you feel the least grateful. And oftentimes when I'm like, okay, I need to look for some gratitude, I have a lot of trouble finding it. <laughs> like one of the tools that I will use is the ABCs of gratitude, which is basically going, all right, A, what can I be grateful for that starts with A? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> apples. I can be grateful for apples because they keep the doctor away. Except I don't like apples because they make me burp. But I like apple pie. Apple pies, I can be grateful for apple pie. Okay, got a B. Uh, being a boy mom. Nope, definitely not grateful for that right now. 
Sometimes I am, but right now, not so much. Um, baths. I love a good hot bath with Epsom salts and candles. Yes, baths. I like baths. I haven't had one in a while, but I like them. I'm grateful for when I do have them. Okay. <laughs> so you, you see how this works. Sometimes even just the laughter that can come from it can be beneficial. But seeking it activates parts of your brain that help you feel happier. It's just one of those cool little things and thus pulls you back from that survival brain and allows you to see things in a bigger picture. I actually used this, oh gosh, it was a few years back. My husband and I were traveling and we were angry at each other. We'd had some sort of miscommunication. And I had recently read an article that talked about gratitude and how gratitude supports your brain feeling happier. So we're sitting in this angry silence. And I think, okay, I'm just going to list all the things that I'm grateful for. And either it'll work and I'll feel better or it'll piss him off. And either way, I feel like I win. So I started listing everything that I was grateful for. And then I said, okay, it's your turn. And credit to him, he joined in. I hadn't even told him about this article, but he joined in and he listed everything that he was grateful for. And we felt better. And we were able to resolve the disagreement. We found a solution to the miscommunication. And it wasn't about fixing what had happened, but it was about preventing it from happening in the future. It was really kind of cool. So I always remember that when I'm angry or when I'm frustrated or I'm feeling down to take that moment to look for gratitude. Do I do that right away? No, I do not do that right away all the time. Sometimes I remember right away, but a lot of times I don't. And that's okay. Again, back to grace, back to, hey, I'm human. I may be trained in this stuff, but I'm still human. So taking the time to look for something that you're grateful for can actually be part of rest because it gives your brain a break in a different way. So you're tapping into the happy places in your brain instead of gnawing on something that is upsetting, instead of beating yourself up over not being where you want to be or not having what you want to have. Here's the other thing about rest. If you're not used to it, and to giving yourself space for it, it's normal for it to be uncomfortable. Just like starting up a new habit, especially something like meditation. So a lot of times we think of rest as being meditation. And I did mention that in the last episode about taking that time, doing some meditation, calming your brain. And there are various ways that we can quiet our brain. Meditation is a great one. But a lot of times people get frustrated with trying to meditate if it's not something that they're used to doing. And that's going to be true of any habit when we don't create stair steps that fit where we're at, not just where we think we should be. Remember, if you listened to one of my earlier episodes, that whole idea of shooting on ourselves, I think it was my trailer episode, actually, if you think of shooting on yourself, eventually it's going to smell bad. So when we start to should on ourselves, like, well, I should be doing this, it's going to be harder. It's always harder to do something that is a should, and it's much more likely that we will stop doing it at some point because well, I'm just not good at this. I guess this just isn't working. It's like starting a diet and eating a donut and then going, well, I guess that diet didn't work instead of going, well, okay, I ate a donut. Now back on the wagon. Any new practice like meditation or any kind of restful thing is going to take some time to get used to. There are two pieces that are really helpful when you want to try something new, when you want to create some sort of practice. And I do think it's helpful when we think of rest to have habits in place to allow ourselves space to rest. And they might be daily habits. They might be weekly habits. They might be monthly habits. As I mentioned, especially for women, there are certain times of the month where more rest is called for. So to plan that in is really helpful. It's called cycle syncing, actually. There is a term for it. Being able to give yourself that space to create, to cultivate something new really helps a lot in actually achieving that thing. The first piece is to decide that it's important because 
we naturally pull away from and avoid and create obstacles to the things that are uncomfortable because we most of us don't like to do things that are uncomfortable. We are we are creatures of comfort. We tend to not want to do things that pull us out of our comfort zone. And yes, you can read all the inspirational quotes about the magic happens outside your comfort zone, but that does not mean that your brain, your auto brain is going to follow with that. There's work involved in actually doing that. And it's not something you can just tell yourself and make it happen. There's a process to embrace in that. So deciding that it's important and why it's important, knowing why it's important to you to do this. And the more it can be because it's something that you want versus because it's something that you don't want. For example, if you think of exercise as I want to feel strong and capable in my body versus I don't want to feel like a fat slob, right? That There's a difference there. One feels inspiring and the other one feels like, Ugh, right? If you think of I want to meditate because I want to feel more peaceful and be able to think more creatively on a regular basis and set myself up for a more energized day versus I want to meditate because I don't want to be grumpy all day. There's just a different energy when you think of like the thing you don't want as the motivator versus the thing that you do want. There's a lighter energy to doing it and more potential excitement behind it. And then give yourself a time block for experimenting. I love the idea of essentially being a scientist in life and saying, okay, I'm going to try this out and see how it works. So I'm assigning a time to the, do this experiment. There's the set time frame. I'm going to say I'm going to do it every day for a week, and then I'm going to check in and see how it's going. Or you may say, I'm going to do this every Wednesday for the next month and then check in and see how it's going. When it's something like meditation, I definitely recommend making it more of a daily practice because it is something that needs to be cultivated. There are a number of habits that just become easier faster when you do them more often. I've even found like with exercise that there are certain exercises that when I do them correctly, the first time they're harder than the next time I do them because I've connected my brain to the action. And when I've connected my brain to the action, even though I'm still using the muscle in the same way, because some connection has happened neurologically, it becomes easier to do. So having that time frame for experimentation and check in, again, just like rest and work, any process that you want to take on, any new habit you want to cultivate, giving yourself that check-in time is really important. I had wanted to get into some suggestions around doing meditation because this is something that it can be really helpful in terms of getting quality rest, but there just is not enough time. So that means you're going to get a bonus episode where I'm going to dig into meditation. And it's not going to be like a guided meditation or anything like that, but just some tips around meditating and meeting yourself where you're at when it comes to meditation. I know so many people who have found meditation really valuable and then fell off of it or had a change in life circumstances and the way they used to find space to meditate is different than what they find now. And again, it's so easy to fall into that trap of draining your energy, beating yourself up, feeling guilty, beating yourself up for feeling guilty around taking that time and all of that fun stuff. When you have had something work previously, and then it's not working the same way, different times of our life call for different ways of doing things, which is one of the reasons why I talk about setting experiments around habits. I also talk about setting up your day a little differently than normally you hear about like your ideal day. So that's definitely going to have to be another podcast because there's way too much to go into there. 
What I would really love for you to take away from this episode especially is giving yourself space is important and it's going to look different at different times in your life and in different periods. And you get to choose what that looks like. One of the things that's come up with a number of my clients who have a hustle this season, partly because of the societal norms around this season, not just because we have this pull to be doing things, but because they're an entrepreneur and they work in an industry that gets overwhelmed in the holidays, perhaps because they sell a product, perhaps because they work in a industry such as fitness, where a lot of people are thinking about doing things differently. You know, the New Year's resolution, everybody starts wanting to sign up for gym memberships. And then the gyms have sales, which prompts people to sign up for gym memberships. And you kind of go, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it the New Year's marketing from the fitness industry? Or is it that people are actually thinking that they want to do something for the new year, this arbitrary day that we have set in the middle of winter? <laughs> like, How many people actually follow through on those resolutions? I, the percentage is pretty low. I've, I've looked it up. I don't recall offhand. Anyway, we do have this interplay of the societal and the individual. And I've mostly talked about individual choices because that is the space that I support people in. I do think it's important to acknowledge the societal factors. And when you recognize that there are choices to be made here, and maybe when it comes down to it, you're listening to this and going, gosh, rest sounds great. And I also need to make money, and this is when I do that. Okay, then it's totally all right to decide that right now is not the time for rest, that you may choose to shift your marketing a little bit to encourage people to think beyond the new year and, hey, you can support small business at any time and things like that. But that shift hasn't happened yet. Rather than going, it doesn't exist, instead you can say, all right, it does exist right now. I am putting things in motion to create a new space in the world based on my values. And I am going to still hustle right now and intentionally create space in February for rest. And that's okay too. You are allowed to choose what works for you. The biggest thing is that while the beating yourself up or doubting yourself and all of those energy drain kind of things are normal, if you can notice what triggers them and get the support and put the systems in place or the people in place to help you stay out of that spiral so that you're not turning into that flat tire car, that's going to help you the most so that the rest that you do take has the largest impact that it can have. Even those five minutes first thing in the morning or five minutes right before bed, hey, I didn't get my full 30, but I gave myself a little bit of time. That little bit of time when intentionally taken can make a huge difference. And it's okay to lean on things like the ABCs of gratitude to help pull your brain back to what you intentionally set it on when it starts to wander off in its habitual (laughs) self-flagellation. And giving yourself grace for that too. Don't beat yourself up for beating yourself up (laughs) is basically the big takeaway here. I would love to hear if you are making a shift at this time, if you are intentionally putting things out there in a different way to create that change or if there's something that you do to help create the space for you to rest send me a message. Let me know. I would love to hear what thoughts this episode brought up for you, what ideas came up for you, or anything that you're already using. Just DM me on Instagram or shoot me an email. I always love to hear from you. And I am so glad that you decided to hang out with me today. And I will talk to you all next time. 
Thanks for listening. I so appreciate you being here. If you got something out of today's episode, please share it. Leave me a review, take a screenshot, and post it on social with a shout out to me. Send it to a friend or, you know, all of the above. Want to hang out more? Join me on Instagram. Or better yet, get on my mailing list to make sure you don't miss out on anything. And remember, your possibilities are as unlimited as you are. Allow yourself to shine, my friend. The world needs your light. See you next time.